Hey everybody, welcome back to Forest Steak. Over the weekend was Kazakon. Now I was extremely busy, you know, running the vendor room and doing other things that I didn't get a chance to film anything. But I am going to show you some of the awesome stuff that I found and picked up and brought home. First up, we had Wit Hertford. He played Jacob in Nightmare on Elm Street Part 5. So you know I had to get an autograph right here. School's out Kruger, Jacob. Now, I wasn't sure if I was, if I was going to keep that big jersey that uh, I, we got from Zobi through the XL box last time. But then, uh, basically like two weeks after we got it, I was debating. Desiree, that's over the convention, said that we got him. So I was like, you know, we've got to go ahead and keep the jersey. And I guess we're going to go around to each convention we go to. And if they have a person from Part 5, we'll get them to join here. But right there, a little over on the 5 his autograph so we got two on here so far uh, hopefully we can fill this thing up the convention did really great we raised a lot of money for a good cause for the you know women's resource center slash away because they're you know altering their name uh, the charity auction that uh, Zoe put a few pieces in and I put about eight pieces in we managed to get close to nine hundred dollars for that charity auction so that's really awesome and I appreciated everybody that was there and helped out and uh, bid on things but I also picked up a lot of cool figures that I found now, luckily, as the vendors were setting up, I got to see them. I was like, oh, can you, I'll, uh, I'll take that. If you just want to set it aside, I'll come back by and pick it up. So that was one good thing of constantly being in the vendor room was I was able to keep eyes out for things that I wanted. Now, at Kazakhan, it's a pop culture convention, so we have uh, lots of anime and, you know, uh, board game stuff, D&D, you know, television. I mean, everything, Funkos, figures, there's people uh, selling dice for games. A lot of homemade crafts, stuff like that. I did find a Marvel figure I had been looking for and hadn't been able to find around the stores. It is a zombie Captain America from What If. Now, I have the original zombie Captain America that they did for the zombie run. And I was happy to finally get him in my hands. I will be taking him out of the box and putting him somewhere. And my buddy uh, Scott Perry, uh, he was coming to the show. And a few weeks ago, he was in Walmart, saw this. And asked him to grab me one. He graciously did. So when he came to the convention, he went and gave it to me. So it's the new crow figure from Walmart. And it is pretty badass. I am debating hard about opening it. If I can find another one, I'll probably grab it and then open this one. Because it has some really great display stuff. And the case is actually the size of about a VHS case almost. So it looks really great. Now after I requested for this to be put aside I uh, thought about it and thought about it. I might have already had one I need to check through my stuff to see if I have it but it's a good thing that if I do already have one this will be an extra it is the Halloween 2 NECA and the reason it's a good thing is because Mad Monster how they started doing the expo it's gonna be at the end of August this year one of the first guests they announced was Dick Warlock so I'm very excited to get a chance to meet him even though my buddy Josh did manage to get me a autograph from him from Horror Hound, I'm going to get a chance to meet him. I've already bought my tickets to photo op. My hotel is booked. I'm ready to go. I'm excited. Uh, John Kassir is going to be there, the voice of the Crypt Keeper, so I'll be able to get to meet him. And then they got about, I don't know, 11 more guests to announce. So I'm pretty excited. But if I do have an extra one, I'm definitely taking one to go get signed by Dick Warlock since I already have a Funko. Managed to snatch up one of these guys. I'm really hoping to get another chance to meet Bruce Campbell. The very first time I met Bruce was one of the very first horror conventions I've ever been to. So I really didn't know how to gauge things and knew what to take. So I did take one Funko with me, got it signed. But now that I know, I will probably take more things. Like at least an 8x10 and maybe a physical item for him to sign. Uh, it would be great to be able to meet him again. So I hope he makes his loops. Again. Last up was a really cool piece that... Uh, I mean, it was just tucked away on anything. It was, you know, uh, rough around the edges on the cardboard. And, you know, there's some sticky stuff from the price tag. But for the price that was on it, I couldn't pass up. It is a Old McFarlane Toys Candyman 3. So maybe we'll get Tony Todd, and I, I have a, I already have a yellow paint pen, and this will definitely go up beside of my gin from the Wishmaster, if I can get this thing autographed. But that's everything I managed to grab. Uh, Wit's Q&A was fun. 
Uh, people asked about his voice work with Star Wars and other things. Uh, of course, I asked a Nightmare on Elm Street question. He said that he never, he was 10 at the time, he never met Robert England out of makeup. He said the first time that he met him, Robert was already done up in makeup, and he walked over in character, reached out his hand to shake Wit's hand, and called him Jacob, and you know, in the voice and everything, and never broke character when he was meeting him. So, and I asked him, did your parents allow you to watch any of the uh, Nightmare on Elm Street movies before getting to meet him in makeup? So it kind of prepared you for what he was going to look like because you were ten. They're like, um, his parents were pretty strict on things, but when it came to the acting and stuff like that, they allowed him to watch and do some research. So he did watch the movies beforehand, so he knew what he was getting into. He said that uh, the one thing that his mom was against was the uh, line he uses at the end, uh, school's out Kruger, was actually supposed to be fuck you Kruger. But his mom said that no, she, there's no way that he is saying that. And she said, how about this? And that was what was in the movie. So that was a cool bit of trivia. Also, if you notice, uh, he talked about the gown he wore got in dirtier as the movie went. Every time you saw him until the end where you saw it's disgusting. He said the underwear that he had to wear also got dirty and he was very uh torn about that because why would you put dirt you're supposed to take dirty wear underwear off not put dirty underwear on so he said it uh if you when you get close to the end whenever she picks him up you can notice that the underwear he's wearing is actually nice pristine and white because he refused to put on dirty underwear so if you want to check for that he said that's a nice little thing that you know a lot of people don't notice or whatever but that's everything from Kazakon. Thanks to everyone that uh, joined and subscribed to me from Kazakon. And, you know, it was a great cause. We raised a lot of money. We'll be back next year. But thank you guys for stopping by. Uh, please like, subscribe, leave a comment down below. And I really hope to see you guys next time.